All right. Uh, first splash into JavaScript. Now, you've learned something about the theory of JavaScript and what you can do with it. We are going to uh, give you a crash course in the basic features of JavaScript via a completely practical tutorial. Here, you'll build a simple guess the number game step by step. Prerequisites, basic computer literacy, a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, an understanding of what JavaScript is, objective to have a first bit of experience at writing some JavaScript and gain at least a basic understanding of what writing a JavaScript program involves. You won't be expected to understand all the code in detail immediately. We just want to introduce you to the high level concepts for now and give you an idea of how JavaScript and other programming languages work. Uh, in subsequent articles, you, you'll revisit all the, these features in a uh, lot more detail. On the side note, many of the code features you'll see in JavaScript are the same as in other programming languages, uh, functions, loops, etc. cetera. Uh, the, the code syntax looks different, but the concepts are still largely the same. Right. Oh. Uh, you'll be expected to understand all the code in detail uh, immediately. Just want to introduce you to the high level concepts for now and give you an idea of how JavaScript and other programming languages work. In subsequent articles, you'll revisit all the features in a lot more detail. So, uh, many of the code features you'll C and JavaScript are the same as other programming languages, functions, loops, etc. The code syntax is different, but the concepts are still largely the same. Think like a programmer. Um, yeah, so one of the hardest things to learn in programming is not the syntax you'll need to learn, but how to apply it to solve real world problems. You need to start thinking like a programmer. This generally involves looking at descriptions of what your program needs to do working out what code features are needed to achieve those things and how to make them work together. Okay. This requires a mixture of hard work, experience, programming syntax, and practice, plus a bit of creativity. The more you code, the better you'll get at it. You can't promise that you'll develop programmer brain in five minutes, but we will give you plenty of opportunity to practice thinking like a programmer throughout the course. With that in mind, let's look at the examples we'll be building in this article and review the general process of dissecting it in tasks. For example, guess the number game. In this article, we'll show you how to build up the simple game you can see below. Number guessing game. We have selected Random number, a uh, random number between one and 10. See if you can guess it in 10 turns or fewer. We'll tell you if your guess was too high or too low. Enter a guess. All right, four. Submit. Over. All right, cool. Um, so have a go at playing with it. Familiarize yourself um, with the game before you move on. Let's imagine your boss has given you the following brief for creating uh, this game. Like I want you to choose, or excuse me, I want you to create a simple guess the number type game. You should choose a random number between one and 100. Then challenge the player to guess the number in 10 turns. After each turn, the player should be told if they are right or wrong, and if they are wrong, whether the guess was too low or too high. It should also tell the player what numbers they pre previously guessed. Uh, the game will end once the player guesses correctly or if, or once the, or once they run out of turns. Once the game good, ends, good, good. What part of the MDN is this? Uh, this is this is the splash. Or excuse me. This is 
a first splash in the JavaScript. Um, Pat just put a link to it in the chat if you want to check. Um, um, Chris just um, sent out the link. Thank Sorry. Okay, okay. I'm there, I'm there. Okay. So the game will end once the player guesses correctly or once they run out of turns. Um, when the game ends, the player should be given an option to start playing again. Uh, upon looking at this brief, the first thing we can do is start breaking it down into simple actionable tasks uh, in as much of a programmer mindset as possible. So number one, generate a random number between one and 100. Number two, record uh, the turn number the player is on. Start on one. Number three, provide the player with a way to guess what the number is. Number four, once a guess has been submitted, first ret uh, record it somewhere so the user can see their previous guesses. Number five, check whether it is the correct number. Number six, if it is correct, Number one, display a congratulations message. Number two, stop the player from being able to return or enter any more guesses. This should mess the game, or this would mess the game up. Uh, number three, display control allowing the player to restart the game. Okay. Number seven, if it is wrong, the player has turns left. Number one, tell the player they are wrong. Number two, allow them to enter another guess. Number three, increment the number, or excuse me, implement the turn by one. <laughs> uh, and number eight, uh, if it is wrong and the player has no turns left, number one, tell the player it is game over. Number two, stop the player from being able to enter the, uh, more guesses. This would mess the game up. Number three, display control, allowing the player to restart the game. All right. Number nine, once the game restarts, make sure the game topic and UI are completely reset. Then go back to step one. Let's now move forward looking at how we can turn these steps into code, building off the example and exploring JavaScript. So, initial setup. To begin this tutorial, we'd like you to make a local copy of the number guessing game. Over here, and we will this. Copy that, and then go to your index file in your project and it's done in there. So you can see we've got a script. We're going to have to put a JavaScript. Uh, all right. So we have our local copy. Once it is, once it, or excuse me, open it in both your text editor and your web browser. So let's go ahead and open this in our web browser. So I'm going to go live. All right. So open it in your text editor and your web browser. At the moment, you'll see a simple heading paragraph or <clears throat> excuse me, a simple heading, paragraph of instructions, and form for entering a guess, but the form won't currently do anything. Uh, the place where we'll be adding all of our code is inside the script element at the bottom of a, uh, as you can see here. All right, so adding variables uh, to store our data. Let's get started. First of all, add the following lines inside your script element. So we're going to have to open up our script. All right, so we're going to enter this. And we have let random number equals math.floor, math.random uh, times 100 plus one const guesses equals document query selector guesses. Const last result document dot selector. 
equals document dot query selector uh, last result mm, const low or high equals document query select low or high const guest submit equals document query selector guest submit const guest field equals document dot query selector guess work all right let guess count equal one let's reset button all right this section of the code sets up the variables and constants <clears throat> and constants we need to store the data our program will use variables are basically containers for values such as numbers or strings uh, of text Create a variable with the keyword let or var followed by a name for your variable. You'll read more about the difference between the keywords in a future article. Constraints are used to store values that you don't want to change and are created with the keyword const. In this case, we are using const constants to store references to parts of our user interface. Uh, the text inside some of them might change, but the HTML elements referenced stay the same. You can assign a value to your variable or constant with, uh, with an equals sign followed by the value you want to give it. For example, the first variable random number is assigned a random number between one and 100 calculated using a mathematical algorithm. <clears throat> the first three constants are each made to store a reference to the result results paragraph in our HTML and are used to insert values into the paragraph later on in the code. So P class equals guesses, P class equals last result, P or uh, low or high. All right, so the next two constants store, um, the next two constants store references to the form text input and submit button and are used to control submitting the guess later on. So we have label for is guesswork equals uh, enter guess label uh, input type text uh, ID guesswork class guess field uh, input type submit value submit guess class guess submit. Right hey, John, I'm going to pause you right there for a second. Do you understand what they're talking about there? Not completely. Okay. So basically, they're just showing you HTML, but they said the first three constants. So if you look at your uh, JavaScript code on the left, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you have a constant guesses, constant last result, constant lower high. Yeah. What it is doing is it's selecting those paragraphs that have those classes and assigning them to those variables. So all paragraphs that have the guesses class yeah. will, um, or there's only one, but the one paragraph that has the guesses class uh, mm -hmm. will be assigned to the guess, guesses variable. Okay, so is this making a variable or? or just, yeah. So it's gonna create a variable. Yeah, const guesses is the same as var guesses. Oh. Uh, const is a new or a newer naming um, what's the word I'm looking for? Variable. Yeah, it's an, it's a new way to name a variable. Um, it's a constant, like it's more constant, like you can't change it within the program. Yeah, it makes the variable immutable, so you can't change it. Oh, okay. Cool. I mean, if you wanted to, you could go through and change let and all the constants to var, and it would still wow. work. I can change let and all the constants to var and it'll still work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let constant var are synonymous. Yeah. But let let and const are different though. Let is more like var and const is something new that doesn't let you change the variable once you uh 
declare it. But okay. it it also looks like they're going to go over that later on because Free Code Camp also goes over that too in the next section, ES6. Right. So if you guys don't understand that now, uh, you're good. You'll get okay. it eventually because they're going to show you. All right. But what we're going over right here is basically like, like, all right. So, the, so this is, this, all right, let's see. Let me pause this right quick. Oh, no, I'll just. All right. Yeah. What you're looking at is HTML. That's not JavaScript. Yeah. 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 So they're just talking about the classes. They're using the classes in the HTML to uh, signify their query selectors in the JavaScript. How would they do that? Why are they using that? Why are they doing what? Oh, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. Instead of, instead of using um, get the limit by high selector. What was that? Instead of using get the limit by high get the limit by class, you can use selector. Yeah. So I notice inside the parentheses of the query selector, those look like uh, CSS classes. Yeah, those are JavaScript, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So you can use class to call JavaScript as well. Is that like a new thing? No, no, you're not using class to call JavaScript. You're using the classes to select HTML in your JavaScript. Oh, okay. And uh, all right. If you're oh. wondering why they're doing that, it's because they're going to update. Uh, they want to dynamically change what's in the, that HTML. So if you look at uh, those three constants, uh, you see that they're just empty paragraphs right now. So what they're going to use is Java. They're going to use JavaScript to update those empty paragraphs with uh, whatever you need for the guessing game. Okay. Yeah, scroll, scroll up, John. Um, hmm. Just real quick to, no, no, on your uh, MDN. Okay. Scroll back up to the game. All right, so like in our guess right there. Okay, you see where it says previous guesses? Uh, yep. Okay, so that was a class that was selected in JavaScript. When you push that button, it put previous guesses zero in that class or in that piece of HTML. And that's done with JavaScript. All those zeros is being added by the JavaScript code. That's HTML. It's being added into the HTML by JavaScript. All right. So, but yeah, so the JavaScript is entering HTML. It's entering more HTML into the HTML, right? Well, it's entering content into the HTML. Oh, there we go. It's entering content into the HTML. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, all right. So one quick question. This right here. Mm -hmm. What is this? That is the selector for the HTML that has a class of guesses. Okay. And then this is the name of the, the, the variable. Yep. Okay. You'll learn more about this when you get into learning about DOM manipulation. All right. Yeah. Dang, MDN just jumps you right into it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, basically MDM's like, hey, just do this, and then uh, we'll explain it all later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so it says in our example, the first variable, random number. Um, where's, where's random number, dude? Random. Let's see. Control F. It's the first variable in your script tag. Our first variable, random number, uh, is assigned a random number between 1 and 100, uh, calculated using a mathematical algorithm. So this is the mathematical algorithm. Well, math, yeah, it starts at math.floor. That whole thing's the algorithm. Oh, okay.
uh, the first three constants are each made to store a reference to the results paragraphs in our HTML and are used to insert values into the paragraphs later on in the code. Okay. So it stores results. It's a reference to store. Uh, the, the, which made to store a reference to the results paragraphs or HTML. The next two constants are uh, the next two constants store references to the form text input and submit button and are used to control submitting the <clears throat> guess later on. Okay. Our final two variables store a guess count of one uh, used to keep track of how many guesses the player has had and a reference to a reset button that doesn't exist yet, but will later on. You learn a lot more variable uh, about variables constants later on in this course, starting with uh, this article. Okay. So functions. Next, add uh, the following below your previous JavaScript. All right. Uh, functions are reusable blocks of code that you can write once and, and run again and again, saving the need to keep repeating code all the time. This is really useful. There are a number of ways to define functions, but for now we'll concatenate one simple, or excuse me, but for now we'll concentrate on one simple type. We have defined a function by using the keyword function, uh, followed by a name with parentheses put after it. After that, we put two curly braces um, inside the curly brace braces. Inside the curly braces goes all the code that we want to run whenever we call the function. So as you can see, we have a created a function. We define the function using the keyword function and then uh, followed by name, followed by the name uh, with parentheses after it. Yeah. After that, we put two curly braces. Um, inside the curly braces goes all the code that we want to run whenever we call the function. So in this one, in this case, it's a alert. I'm a placeholder. Uh, when it's an alert with the, the I'm a placeholder. All right, so when we want to run the code, we type the name of the function followed by parentheses. Okay. Let's try that now. Save your code and refresh the page in your browser and go to the developer tools, JavaScript console and enter the plan. So we save that, go over here, and uh, so we'll copy that, and uh, open up all the tools. Council, and this is check. Yes. Oh, the semicolon. 
Uh, I'll place order. Sweet. There we go. Thing, uh, return, enter. You should see an alert come up that says, I am a placeholder. We have defined a function in our code that creates uh, an alert whenever we call it. Oh. You'll learn a lot about functions later in this course. Operators. JavaScript operators allow us to perform tests, do not join strings together, and other such things. If you haven't already done so, save your code refresh the page um, in your browser and open the developer uh, uh, tools in JavaScript console. Um, then we can try typing in the examples shown below, type in each one from the example columns exactly as shown, press enter after each one, and what results they return. Uh, if you don't have easy access to the browser developer tools, you can always use the simple built-in council seen below. First, let's uh, take a look at arithmetic operators, for example. So the operators are plus, addition, for example, six plus nine, they're plus, minus, and so we have the plus sign, the minus sign, we have an asterisk for multiplication, and we have the forward slash for division. All right, so you can also use the plus operator to join text strings together. Uh, in programming, this is called concatenation. By entering the following lines one at a time. All right, so uh, you can use the plus operator to join text strings together. In programming, this is called uh, concatenation. Try entering the following lines one at a time. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and enter this to our script. Let uh, in. Oh, no, I think we're supposed to do. This. In the council. I'm open this up in a new new window. Okay. There we go. Yes. Here we are in the council. And uh, so it says, let's name equal bingo. I'm gonna delete what I just entered right here. And uh, open this window back up. Proceed. Am I supposed to be entering this here in the council? Entering this uh, in my code? You guys know? You're you're fine. You can do either. Okay. I mean, just just you know. Uh, well, I guess. Yeah, it should be that. Oh, you know, I think it is supposed to be in the. Uh, in the. In yeah, the, I think it's in the. On the web page, right? Page. I and think that's it's right. That's the only way. Blue square. Yeah. I think it's sh just showing you the operators, right? And like string concatenation.
so uh, make it hello. Uh, hello equals says hello. All right. But. Oh, you know what it is? Uh, I think we're defining it, and then, like, it's, uh, yeah, it's, like, calling it, or it's uh, declaring it. So let's check up. That's what it is. Uh, so we're entering it in the council and um, delete all this right here. says hello all right right on right on uh, you, you can enter that last one if you want uh, so there are also some shortcut operators available called augmented assignments operators for example uh, you want to add a new text string to an existing one and return the result, you can do this. M is a, a plus equals. Uh, this is equivalent to name equals name plus says hello. When we are running true false tests, for example, inside conditionals, see below, we use comparison operators. For example, the uh, operator is uh, the, the uh, um, it's three equal signs, and it's uh, so we have the strict equality operator uh, is exactly is exactly is it exactly the same? So we have five strictly equals two plus four. For example, and uh, then we have the non quality is not the same operator. Uh, for example, Chris, uh, uh, not equality is not equal. Uh, TH plus RIS. Then we have uh, less than uh, 10 is less than 6, and we have greater than 10 is greater than 20. are all examples of operators. And so next we are on to conditionals. Return. All right, so returning to our check guess function. Okay. I think it's safe to say that uh, we don't want to just split um uh <clears throat> excuse me. We don't just want to split out a placeholder message. We want it to check whether a player's guess is correct or not and respond appropriately. At this point, replace your current check guess function with this version instead. So we're gonna erase the script within our script tags and uh, we're gonna add all of this in there. Okay. Function check guess. We have a chunk function with the name of check guess. Then we have uh, let user uh, let user guess equal number. Um, 
and, and this is an argument, correct? Uh, the guess field dot value. Uh, so we have a um, let guess let user guess equal number uh, with an argument of uh, guess field dot value, um, and we have if guess counts um, strictly equals one. Um, guess uh, guesses dot text content um, equals previous guesses. Okay, so next we have now we're gonna uh, declare our, uh, our 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 variable or our, our excuse me we're gonna declare guesses uh, dot text content plus equals user guess plus <clears throat> an empty string. Um, if user guess equals or strictly equals random number, uh, last result dot text content equals uh, congratulations, you got it. Last result dot style dot background color equals green. Low or high dot text context equals empty string. Uh, set game over. Um, else if guess count e strictly equals ten. Last re uh, last result dot text content equals uh, game over. Uh, set game over. Yeah. <clears throat> um, else last result text content equals wrong. Uh, last result style dot background color equals red if user guess is less than random number um low or high text content last guess was too low um it, else if user guess is greater than random number low or high dot text content equals last guess was too high okay um next we have uh, now we have guess count um, plus plus guess field dot value equals empty string guess field dot focus. All right. This is a lot of code. Phew. Let's go through the section and explain what it does. Thank God. Ah, oh, boy. I love you, MDN. All right. So here we are, boys and girls. The first line, line number two above, uh, declares a variable called user guess. All right? It's line two, calls. Let's see. So first line, line two above, declares a variable called user guess and sets its value to the current value entered inside the text field. Um, inside the text field. We also run the value through the built-in number method uh, just to make sure the value is definitely a number. All right. <clears throat> Look up here. All right. So next we encounter our first conditional code block, line three through five above. Conditional code block uh, allows you to run code selectively depending on um, let's you run uh, code selectively depending on whether a certain condition is true or not. Uh, it looks a bit like a function, but it isn't. Um, the simplest form of conditional block starts uh, with the keyword if, then some parentheses, and some curly braces. Um, uh, inside the parentheses, we include a test. Uh, if the test returns true, uh, we run the code inside the curly braces. If not, we don't, and move on to the next bit of code. In this case, the test is testing whether the guess count variable is equal to one i.e. whether this is the player's first go or not. 
Um, as you see, we have guest count equal, or excuse me, uh, strictly equal one. Or strictly equal one. Uh, if it is, we make the guesses paragraphs text content equal to previous guesses. If not, we don't. Six appends the current user, uh, appends the current user guess value onto the end of the guesses paragraph plus a blank space. So there will be a space between each guess shown. Okay, ah, so it's not empty, it's a blank space, it's a, it's a blank space, right on. All right. Block lines eight through twenty-four uh, does a few checks. The if, um, yeah. All right. So, the if the 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 first if uh, parentheses and curly bracket uh, checks whether the user's guess is equal to the random number set at the top of JavaScript. If it is, the player has guessed correctly. The game is won, uh, so we show the players a congratulations message with a nice green color. <clears throat> Clear the contents of the high-low guess information. Clear the contents of the high-low, the, the low-high guess information box and run a function called set game over, which we'll discuss later. All right. Now we've chained another test onto the end of the last one using else if, okay? <clears throat> using an else, else if structure. This one checks whether this turn is the user's last turn. If it is, the program does the same thing as the previous block, except with a game over message instead of a congratulations message. The final block chain onto the end of this code, the else, the else uh, with the curly bracket, um, contains code that is only run if neither of the other two tests return true, i.e. the player didn't guess right, but they have more guesses left. In this case, we tell them they are wrong. Then we perform another conditional statement, or excuse me, another conditional test to check whether the guess was higher or lower than the answer, displaying a further message as appropriate to tell them higher or lower. The last three lines in the function, lines 26 through 28 above, okay, get us ready for the next guess to be submitted. We add one to the guess count variable so the player uses up their turn. Um, plus plus is an incrementation operation. Increment by one. And empty the value out of the form text field and focus it. Ready for the next guest to be entered. <clears throat> All right. So events. At this point, we have a nicely implemented well, first, I want to check out and see what my, my game looks like. Oh, I think I have, I have to actually say. Um, anyways, uh, at this point, we have a nicely implemented check guess function, but it won't do anything. Ah, but we haven't ca uh, called it yet. Ideally, we want to call it when the submit guess button is pressed. And do the, to do this, we need to use an event. Events are things that happen in the browser. A button being clicked, a page loading, a video playing, etc. In response to which we can run blocks of code, the constructs that listen out for the event happening are called event listeners and the Blocks of code that run in response to the event firing are called event handlers. 
at the following line below your check guess function. Okay, so we're gonna add this right here to Um, here we are adding the event listener to the guest submit button. Uh, this is a method that takes two input values called arguments. Okay. Uh, the type of event we are listening out for in this case, click is a string and the code we want to run when the event occurs in this case, check guest function. Um, yeah. Note that we don't need a, to specify the parentheses when writing inside, writing it inside add event listener. Okay, so try saving and refreshing your code now and your example should work to a point. The only problem now is that if you guess the correct answer or run it, um, or run out of guesses, uh, the game, will break because not only um because not only excuse me the game will break because we've not yet defined the set game over function that is supposed to be run once the game is over let's add our missing code now and complete the example functionality so finishing the game functionality Let's add the set game over function to the bottom of our code and then walk through it. Uh, add this now below the rest of your JavaScript. All right, so we're gonna add this function, the set game over function. Right, we're gonna add this below the rest of our JavaScript. Oh, now what's the first two lines? Disable the form, text input, and button by setting their disabled properties to true. Uh, this is necessary because if we didn't, the user could submit more guesses after the game is over, which would mess things up. The next three lines generate a new button element. Set its text label to start new game and add it to the bottom of our existing HTML. Um, the final line sets an event listener on our new button so that when it is clicked, a function called reset game is run. Now we need to define this function too. Add the following code again to the bottom of your JavaScript. We're going to add this reset game function. It's rather long block of code. This rather long block of code uh, completely resets everything to how it was at the start of the game. So the player can have another go at it. Puts the all right, all right. So it puts the guest count back down to one. Right? 
empties all the text out of the information paragraphs, removes the reset button from our code, enables the form elements and empties, and focuses the text field ready for a new guest to be entered, um, removes the background color from the last result paragraph, uh, generates a new random number so that you are not just guessing the same number again. All right. At this point, you should have a fully working, simple game. Congratulations. All we have to do now in this article is talk about a few other important code features that you've already seen. Although you may not have realized it, uh, loops. One part of the above code that we need to take a more detailed look at is the for loop. Loops are a very important concept in programming which allow you to keep running a piece of code over and over again until a certain condition is met. Start with, go to your browser, developer tools, JavaScript Council, again, and enter the following. And we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna move on over here. Can you erase that? Up here, you know, we'll go to tools council and uh, paste that on in there. So, uh, happened. The numbers 1 to 20 were pointed out in your council. This is because the loop, a for loop, takes three input values, arguments, right? Oh, that's what happened. I was wondering what happened. I saw these numbers pop up. I thought it was messed up. We ain't messing up, guys. It's not messing us up. That's supposed to be like that. <laughs> Sweet. Big butt. Happened. The numbers 1 to 20 were printed out in your council. This is because the loop, a for loop, takes three input values, arguments. Number one, starting value. In this case, we are starting a count at one, but this could be any number you like. You can replace the letter I with any name you like too. I is used as a convention, short and Easy to remember, okay? Um, number two, an exit condition. Here we have specified i is less than 21. Uh, so the loop will keep going until i is no longer less than 21. When i reaches 21, the loop will no longer run. Mm. Number three, an incrementor. We have specified I++, plus plus, which means add one to I. The loop will run once for every value of I until I reaches a value of 21. As discussed above, in this case, we are simply printing the value of I out to the council on every iteration using council.log. Ooh. Now let's look at the loop in our number guessing game. The following can be found inside the reset game function. So we have, all right. So this code creates a variable containing a list of all the paragraphs inside div class result paras. Using the query selector, um, the query, using the query selector all method, then it loops through each one, removing the text content of each. So let's take a look at this code. We have let reset paras equals document dot query selector all. Uh, then we have result paras p. Okay. And we have four let i equals zero with i less than reset paras length 
and then we have I plus plus, or um, uh, add, we have add one to I. A small discussion on objects. Oh, one second, we have a question. Okay, we're here. Okay. Uh, a small discussion on objects. Let's add one more final improvement before we get to this discussion. Add the following line just below the let reset button line near the top of your JavaScript, then save your file. Let reset button. Where's we let reset? Let reset. Pasted that there. This line. Oh, oh, I think they want you to uh, look. Go to like line eleven around your code. I think it'll be around there. Okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Oh, down a little more. Inside the script, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was after. Oh. It's right after where they where you declare the guest count, I think is where they want you to put it. Yeah, I think your your check guest function is. Paste that right there. <clears throat> this line uses focus method to automatically put the text cursor into the input text field as soon as the page loads, meaning that the user can start typing their first guess right away without having to click the form field first. It's only a small addition, but it improves usability giving uh, the user a good visual clue as to what they've got to do to play the game. Um, that's what's going on in a bit more detail. All right, so in JavaScript, everything is an object. Um, an object is a collection of related functionality stored in a single grouping. You can create your own projects but that is quite advanced and we won't be covering it until much later in the course. For now, we will just briefly discuss the built-in objects that your browser contains, which allow you to do lots of useful stuff. Um, so in this particular case, we just, we first created a guest field constant that stores a reference to text input form field in our HTML. Uh, the following line can be found amongst our declarations near the top of uh, the code. Uh, const guest field equals document dot uh, guesswork. To get this reference, we use the query selector method uh, of the document object. Query selector takes one piece of information a uh, CSS selector that selects the element you want to reference. Because guesswork now contains a reference to an, um, uh, an input element, it will now have access to a number of properties 
basically variables stored inside objects, some of which can't have their value changed, and methods, basically functions stored inside objects. One method available to is focus. So we can now use this line to focus the text input. Guest field uh, dot focus. <clears throat> Variables that don't contain references to form elements won't have focus available to them. For example, the guesses constant contains a reference to p, um, to a p element, and the uh, um, guess count variable contains a number. Okay. So next is playing with browser objects. Playing with the with browser objects. Let's play with some browser objects a bit. Uh, number one, first of all, open up your program in a browser. Next, open uh, your browser developer tools and make sure the JavaScript console tab is open. Number three, type in guest field and the council will show you that the variable contains an input element. You'll also notice that the council auto completes, auto completes the names of objects that exist inside the execution environment, including your variables. Right, so let's do that. We're gonna enter, we're gonna type in guesswork. Type in guess field. Guess field. Right. So what does it say it does? Uh, it says that it shows us that the variable contains an input, which it does. I like that. Oh, it's going to be helpful. What is that? Oh, it's function. It's just naming us. It's just showing us what it is. That's cool. All right. Um, number four. Now type in the following guest field dot to value equals hello. Close with a semicolon. The value property represents the current value entered into the text field. You'll see that by entering this command, we've changed the text in the text field. Now try typing in guesses and pressing return. The council will show you that the variable contains a P element. Let's go ahead and type in guesses. something in the wrong place. All right, so I'm not going to stop recording. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys how I'm going to find the right answer. So what I'm going to do is go down here. Oh, we're almost done too, dude. All right, so I'm going to go down here to source code. I'll open this up in a new tab. Go ahead. 
I don't know what the source code that is, but I'm gonna open up this source code right here. And instead of looking for the traveler, I'm gonna just get the right answer. Figure out where we gotta put it. So let's see. What was the last thing we entered? The last thing we entered was guest field dot focus. So let's look for guest field dot focus on here. So I'm just control F. There it is. So my guest field dot focus is in the wrong place. So I'm gonna put it in the right place. Control X dot F. So it goes, I'm gonna look for reset button, control F, R, E, S, S, E. That's on there. Five dots. Spell button, right? Let's do that. There we go. Right here. Oh, there it is. It's right there, anyways. It's, huh. Okay. So let's see. Try to turn guesses off. Oh, no. I cheat. I'm just going to copy all this. Still give me the same error. It says guesses is not defined. What is the air show, Jonathan? Uh, you know what? I think it might be because I didn't save. And guess uh, reference error guesses is not defined. So do you see the syntax air above it? Oh yeah. Open at line 87 column. Let's see. Oh, I see. So do you see uh the do you see the four uh no. Yeah. It looks like you don't have an ending uh, for the function for the for 87 through 99 there's there's no closing bra bracket right yes yeah, so there's, the there's an opening game. bracket yeah for the reset game function sorry because you have an opening bracket for the for loop on line 90 and a closing for loop or closing bracket for the for loop but you don't have a, a closing bracket for the uh, and those ones will like they'll shut javascript down like it's not even going to run so uh, on 99, enter a new line and put a closing curly brace. 
You should get the colored bracket uh, extension for oh, Visual yeah. Studio Code. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have that extension. Color bracketizer or something like that. Yeah, I use bracket yeah, pair color. Oh, you probably want to, uh, the random number is still within that function. Because remember, everything within the, so keep the random number in the reset game function. Right? Everything is, there's a function, right? Everything is. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Hi, dude. It happens. See how when you type that in, it kind of highlighted the other bracket? Uh, all, yeah, that line? Yeah, it highlighted well, the bracket in there. 87 to me. It's like paired with it. Oh, uh, when you click on a pair of brackets, it'll highlight the bracket that it's paired to. Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't know that. No, I didn't see that. And if you get the bracket pair color extension, then it color codes all your brackets, making it even easier to to see what they're attached, like what they're paired with. I get that right now. What's the uh, what's the what's the name of that extension? I use bracket oh. pair color. I don't know if there's other ones. Yeah, I probably won't have it available until I reset. So uh, after we're almost done with this anyway. So when we start free code camp, I'll just reset them. Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, no worries. Working code. <laughs> uh, let's see. So all right. Um. So let's try entering guesses now. Ah, there we go. Proper working code. Who doesn't love that? It says the council will show you that the variable contains a P element. Right, now try entering the following line. Uh, this is that value. And undefined. Because paragraphs don't have the value property. To change the text inside a paragraph, you need uh, the text content property instead. Try this. Guesses.text content equals where is my paragraph? Uh, and it's a string and it's closed semicolon. Now, for some fun stuff, try entering the below lines one by one. With guesses dot style dot background color equals yellow.
next we have guesses that style that font size equals 200 percent This is that style dot pattern equals ten pixels. Hmm. Okay. And after that, we finally have guesses dot style box shadow equals three pixels. Uh, Pixels, six pixels in black. Right on. Every element on a page has a style property, which itself contains an object whose properties contain all the inline CSS styles applied to that element. This allows us to dynamically set new CSS styles on elements using JavaScript. Finished for now. So that's it for building the example. You got to the end and well done. Try your final code out or play with our finished version here. If you can't get the example to work, check it against the source code. And we will see you next time in What Went Wrong, Troubleshooting JavaScript.